good old fashioned barn find this car is. All right, so what are we doing here? All right, uh, we're changing the- Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Tegan. Uh, I'm obviously into muscle cars and I'm teaching people how to work on a quick fuel 750 mechanical secondaries. Wait, stop. Let's take the thing off first so I can show the car while we're doing this. Of course, the mechanic won't shower, he's going to work on stuff. All right, so we got the filter off. So right. now, what are we doing now? We're working on, what, what's the carb? Okay, uh, we're working on... Okay, we're gonna have to reset. Okay. Take two. So, uh, go ahead, Tegan, tell them what we're gonna show them. All right, this is a Quick Fuel Technologies 750 CFM Q, series, Q Black Diamond Series carburetor with mechanical secondaries. And I've had some tuning issues with it. Out of the box, it's probably made for a really radical cam. Um, this is a Blueprint Crate Engine 408. Um, it's a pretty mild cam with about 55 thousandths lift. Uh, not much separation. Um, on the lobes, probably edit that out, but whatever. Um, I was going to show you how to adjust the power valve, which, despite calling all the professionals in the world, no one wants to deal with this or know the part numbers. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. Would this be the similar to other carbs? Uh, yes, this is probably uh, quick fuel got acquired by Holly probably around um, I'm just gonna guess 2012 because I think I bought my carburetor around 2012 and immediately after I couldn't find the parts <laughs> Perfect, that's so we're now in 2019 uh, Both the time you actually start working on projects on a car like you know seven years later. It's pretty typical. Yep to reiterate what team was saying There's a fair amount of information on changing up most of the jets, but when you want to change the jets in the power valve, um, information was lacking. Who did you call again? I called Quick Fuel Technology, well, through Holly, uh, their help test, their technicians. And I talked to about six people and got about, four of them had no idea what the hell I was talking about. One of them, uh, I don't know if I should release his name, but it was really helpful. He actually found a part number for me and knew what I was talking about, which was a blessing after spending about 20 minutes on hold each time. I'm not saying their customer service wasn't great because I understand they're an international company. You're leaking um, fuel, just so you know. So, uh, yeah, you contacted a whole bunch of people. Yeah. And more or less, even the best guy couldn't really help you. Oh yeah, oh look at her coming out of so there. So this is just because the fuel bowls are full. Um, if anyone's dealt with a Holly, just don't be alarmed. That's Don't that, be alarmed. This is like mash. Support the, support the oil field workers. You know, that's oh yeah, just dump that everywhere. Oh yeah. We'll just uh, go anyway. bucket. Uh, yeah. Not really. So you don't actually need to remove the carb. You're just removing the front bowl. Yeah. Um. Holy cow! Like it's like flooded full of fuel back there. It burns. Anyways, it's all out of there now. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, we're coming over to the workstation here. Yeah. People know this, but. Okay, well then maybe we don't need to say that, but so you got the front bowl off. All right, you can completely remove the front bowl here. Uh, here's your full four bolts. Uh, don't lose your Teflon screws. This isn't about as much uh, changing the uh, difference between carburetors. I'm just going to address this power valve issue because I have scoured the internet and found it very difficult uh, to get an answer for this. So yeah. there's a lot of other problems. So, so we're not talking about anything else today, just power valve. Mostly just in great detail. I'll cover a few other things. Go ahead, Tegan. All right, here's your fuel bowl and uh, your, yeah. your front bowl assembly. This is your fuel bowl, Kings Dollar Fuel Float Assembly. Uh, it's pretty well documented. I can look up probably way better car videos than I'll ever produce for that. And here's your billet metering block from Quick Fuel Technologies. It's actually a really nice piece and pretty happy with it. Here's your two of your four coronal idle screws. Um, that's your idle circuit. These are your primary jets right here. And uh, this is your power valve. Uh, a lot of people actually uh, block this power valve off when you're in drag racing because you're either full throttle or you're no throttle. So uh, they don't really like this metering. These are your seal gaskets. We'll just go ahead and strip these off so uh, I can't run my car. Rip them. Uh, remember, take that off. And. Uh, Here's your power valve. Is this a 6.5? This is a 6.5, so that means that about uh, 6.5 inches of water um, on your vacuum gauge, that's when this one opens, or less. So 
0 to 6.5 this should be open and then more vacuum that should be closed more vacuum uh, high vacuum is usually associated with uh, low throttle conditions low load on the engine like cruising uh, obviously idle is only on your idle circuits which is controlled by these two so this basically comes on and probably you know mid throttle uh, half throttle conditions going up a hill or uh, moderate acceleration this comes on um, regular cruising uh, low load conditions are supported by these these are your primary jets uh, <clears throat> so how I have it right now is because I had I had this blocked off before um, just because a lot of what people, was blocked off specifically? I, I had the power valve blocked off okay before um, it's just a block off plate you basically take these out um, and replay it, replace it with just a, a plug that screws in there and then you're basically running off your two circuits you have your uh, primary circuits and then your secondaries which are in uh, the other metering bowl at the back of the carburetor and how it works is under cruising conditions I'd be running really rich uh, because these jets were oversized because when I get into mid throttle conditions and the engines requiring more load there wasn't another circuit to compensate for that so these were oversized so then when I got to mid throttle conditions these actually ran at a you know an air fuel ratio of probably 13.7 uh, to 14 in those mid load conditions which you want to run a little bit richer than that usually so um, I, these obviously had to be really rich um, when you're cruising down the road which smells like fuel and isn't great for obviously your fuel economy and the people behind it didn't really appreciate it <laughs> okay so let's just let's just just to catch everyone up what, what, what Tegan's actually already done the work here and change this but we're gonna take it out show you how to change everything and probably talk a little bit about the strategy of how you know which jets to put in and also I think you should probably say something about like where you got the jets from because apparently it was difficult to find them okay all right uh, like I said this is a quick fuel technologies product but they ship through summit um, these parts are very difficult to find they're not on the quick fuel website I actually had a call for help and get these uh, special power valve jets. I'm going to tear the power valve apart now in the metering block and then just explain kind of the details of the power valve and uh, the metering system that's involved with it. So I've already cracked this loose. It should be just... Um, what would you use to crack it loose? Just a croissant wrench and all sixteenths here. And uh, you don't have to crank anything on a carburetor super tight because it's all aluminum and aluminum threads have a finite life. So. Yeah. We're going to take this, so we're taking this power valve out here and just screws right out. Screws right out. These are your restrictions for the flow of the power valve. Another one here. Um, okay. And we'll address these in a bit. Um, these are usually in most carburetors like old Hollies um, and other such designs that these are actually a fixed orifice size and they're not changeable but because this is an aftermarket billet metering block they especially have these threaded so you can change them out um, which is what I had trouble finding information on so that's what we're covering today I'm just gonna go over the power valve a little bit um, this 6.5 you can uh, people can do research and find out when their engine put a vacuum gauge on their engine and find out about what time they want this to open. A power valve is basically just an on off switch. Um, it doesn't do any physical fuel metering like jets do. They have uh, big windows on here and actually the quick fuels, one of their braggings is they have four windows for more fuel flow when they open. But basically this is off. No, there's no fuel flow um, through this orifice until it hits its vacuum of 6.5 to zero. And then it opens and it's basically on. There's as much fuel as it can flow through here it flows because it's an on off switch just on a diaphragm there and these are your restriction orifices that actually meter the fuel and like I said before those are mostly fixed on most carburetors but because this is an aftermarket carb this is these are adjustable uh, this is what most drag racers do from my understanding is just this is a block off and a power valve block off and uh, as you can see it's just a machined piece that fits in there and basically cuts off that circuit so that your primary and your secondary jets are what feeds the fuel. And the reason for that, from my understanding, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, is because you, 
in drag racing, you're just either full throttle or idle, basically, so you don't need the power valve at all. Yeah, you don't need the power valve to add fuel because it could just be compensated by your primaries and secondaries, and you don't really care about intermediate loads and fuel economy and stuff like that. You're just on off. And also, if you ever have a backfire in your engine, a backfire can actually travel through your carb and actually damage these power valves. And then you have to replace the power valve, or there's kits that do power valve protection and stuff like that that I don't really know too much about. But um, that's how that's going to go. So what I've been running this for a while, getting really bad fuel economy, but my car runs and I didn't want to run my engine lean. So we're replacing this now. And I've Are you putting the new quick fuel one in? Uh, this is a new quick fuel. Like I said, I did some tuning before and 6.5 inches is kind of what I wanted to open. If I run a little lean um, at mid thrall conditions, I'll maybe up this to a 7.5 so that um, it'll open with less load on the engine and start adding extra fuels. Okay, so where is your old one? Just for reference. This is it. Oh, that's it, it. It was a plug. Oh, it was just a, oh, it was a plug before. It was a oh, plug okay. before. And then, so why do you have, because these have the extra four holes in them or whatever? Right, just because they're from Quick Fuel and they brag about that. So this yeah. is an 8.5 inches of water this is opens, and this is uh, 8.5. Okay. I might be wrong, it might be inches of mercury, but I think it's inches of water. Well, it says, it says inches of water right on there. Oh, okay. Wait. Is that HG? Yeah. That's mercury then, yeah. Oh. Who cares? Long story short, bigger, uh, smaller. Yeah, um, basically, if this isn't your fuel restriction, you don't have to worry about the four windows, in my in my consideration. I might be wrong. I haven't put too much thought into it. I just basically want to tell you about this. Okay, so here are these changeable jets, these orifices, and this was difficult to find what number this was. I called uh, Quick Fuel to actually find out what my factory ones are, and they, I believe, are a number 55. Um, but only, are they both the same? They're, these are both the same. And just to be clear, when he says factory, he means factory for the aftermarket car, yeah, not fa factory for the car. Factory Quick Fuel, that's correct. And uh, uh, one guy told me 55. One guy called me and said that there were 20 threes or 33s in there, which are really small. Um, I'm gonna grab them right now if you can see the difference. Are these the new ones here? These are new ones. And what size are these? These are four nines? These are 49s. So yeah, so I mean, you can order them, you can see there it says yeah. 49, 7-49. And I don't know if you can, you, it's difficult to see, but this is a, a o, a, o, can, an O2O size, and that hole is just finitely small. So let's so let, just hold it real steady. And uh, face the light a little bit more. And I'll just zoom in and see if I can get everyone a clear shot. Focus. Ooh, we're struggling to focus there. Okay, well, well, when we get them out of the package, we'll show it. But anyway, it's a small hole. Very small. Um, right now, I switched these out to, they were an 055 originally, and what happened was that when I was running my power valve, I was running on my primary circuit, and then my power valve would open and basically it would flood the engine with fuel. Um, I have an air, air to fuel ratio gauge in my car and I'd be running you know, 12, 13 to one. And then as soon as the power valve opened, it didn't matter what time it opened, so it wasn't determined by this, by the vacuum, because no matter what time it opened, it would flood my engine at mid throttle conditions. So that's why I had to block it off. Right. Um, so what is happening is this is letting too much fuel in that my engine can't handle it those loads. It's basically upping it 10 to 15 jet sizes, just an estimation, I didn't do the calculations, um, which is way too much fuel for that load condition. And so basically, it was a, the circuit was too rich for me. So I changed these down from a 55 to a 45, just referring to the part numbers. Now just to, just to kind of make sure we're clear, you might have a little bit gone over this already, but there's no way to tell what size they are other than looking at the package, right? Like you could not tell what you had in there? Yeah, these are too small, they don't have markings on them. Okay, um, so you gotta really keep track of that. <laughs> yeah, primary jets, if you go to primary jets, they do have markings on them. This is a 68 jet, which is stamped on the side, but because these are so small, they don't have uh, sizes on them. on them. Okay, And so uh, you, you basically just are downsize them to fix your problem, right? Right, um, and and we've already, do you want to just take one out and just show how to do it just in case? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I know that these are a 68 jet and these say these are 55s, but these orifices are not correlated 
these numbers aren't, aren't relative to each other. They're independent numbers. I don't know the exact units of it. I could do some more research on it. But as you can see, this orifice is obviously a 68 and this is a 55 and they are a lot different sizes. This is way much, this is way smaller compared to this for the relative closeness of the numbers. So not the same scale. Um, so I'm going to pull these out. You just, you want to be very delicate because these are very small brass fittings in an aluminum thread with very few threads. So just maybe, uh, turn it a little more to just keep the light on. It's hard. It's really hard to video a black carb, <laughs> like everything, all the shadows, but, uh, I'll try and zoom in and kind of, so I'm just, so you take a very little flat blade screwdriver, get a good screwdriver with a nice flat surface steel. Steel screwdriver. Steel yeah. screwdriver for tuning chainsaws. Works really well in my opinion. And I just put these in super light. Uh, and you just get in there, you unscrew these and lose them immediately. And they're both the same. And yeah, immediately gone. So uh, we're not actually going to swap them here because it's already been done. No, I am going to swap them. Oh, you are going to swap them. Uh, just because when I ran this before, I would like a little more fuel added. Uh, than what you had. So yeah. you you swapped these and tested it and it was a lot better. It was a but lot you're better. But this is now kind of fine tuning. Yeah, this is fine tuning. Okay, so you're going from a 5.5 to a... I'm going from... They, they were originally a 5.5. I went to an, a 5.5 or an 0.45. And uh, now I'm going to go to an 0.49. Just a little bit bigger, uh, just to get a little bit extra fuel. And this is something that probably anybody that's tuning to this level would know, but you would you can keep working to you and I'm just going to run my own commentary here, but, um, you do want them both to match. Um, you can't, you know, like they're going to two different barrels. So you don't want to like, don't get these lost or confused. This, this is a, yeah, this hit. is a nightmare. I've already almost got the confused in my head. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Well, you could probably measure them with a caliper to try and sort of figure it out, but yeah, you could be very meticulous with this. Hey, yeah. Like Oh four nine and it's an orifice, just like any brass orifice. You don't want to be sticking things in it. You don't want to be sticking, um, objects in it to scratch, to scratch it. So Cause that'll change the fuel flow. Oh, we're just having a hard time get, keeping your hand out of the light here, but there yeah, we go. sorry. Um, I just, you want to be really slow and cautious when screwing these in, because if you mess up these threads, you're basically getting a new metering block. You are, you've just toasted a metering block because these thre you're not remachining these threads in my opinion. Quick fuel may beg to differ, but, uh, I'm in Canada and shipping would destroy me. Yep. Land of the free. What they really mean is not that. <laughs> oh, and just be very careful. If you hear a cross threading, you might as well just quit. <laughs> what does cross threading sound like? You can really just you, not good. You hear it with your fingers, really. It's like resistance when there shouldn't be resistance. So yeah, and as for a torque spec, I mean, basically just a, a little snug. I'm just oh, brass on aluminum. You don't need much. Yeah. Um, I also got to apologize for my terrible camera work. I keep watching it in real life and not through the camera, and then all of a sudden I'm pointing into space. So oh sorry, goodness. guys. I am mistaken. Actually, these quick fuel exclusive ones do have stamping on the top of them. No way. Yeah. So the new ones have snapping. These are the new ones. And the but the ones that they put in factory didn't. That is correct. Okay. I got to try and focus on it. You know what? We're probably, probably better off to just have it out of the car for me to show that. Okay. Yeah. Hold, hold it right there. So you can actually see right there. It says 049. This is so hard to pick up on the camera. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, I can see it. Turn it a little bit more towards the camera. Look at that guys. That shot's for you. 49. Anyway. Well, that's good to know. Right. So your factory, what size your factory? No, you just know your factory ones don't have markings. Yeah. Factory ones don't have markings. I actually, this was a uh, very common with my power valve too. My factory power valve did not have a marking on it. Um, after doing, you can check them with a vacuum gauge and, um, just produce vacuum with a little hand pump and we'll see when it switches and see when it opens up. Uh, it was actually the factory one was a 4.5, which is be for a quite aggressive cam that has, uh, but it's a pretty aggressive carb, you know, factory. Like, it, I mean, it's almost a little, in a way, it seems like you're detuning this carb a bit. Yes. To match your it, engine. It came, this carb I found was, it came with like a 74 primary uh, jet and an 84 secondary, which is a very, fairly big spread. Like, what's the flow on this carb? Uh, 750 CFM. Okay. That's not super, super big, but I mean, Right, yeah, but um, it would be for 
like if you had a really aggressively cammed engine that didn't produce power till you know 35 4500 rpm that's when it would really like the fuel dump to it um so i think that's what this carb was kind of because the q series is more uh, of the race series carb they would tune it for send it out from the factory for a more aggressive uh as you can more aggressive engine but as you can see guys like it just there was just a tad bit of resistance when i was screwing it in and don't keep forcing it you back it out and start again because it should just be smooth um so i was actually cross threading it and i just recognized that you just back it out we get a different angle and then make sure it's straight start again and then i don't know if you can see but just use your little two surgeon fingers here and it should screw in and then it stops and then you just give, went out there you go and three. then you just give a little tweak just the slightest little thing, just the slightest little tweak. I mean, if it falls out, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is, like it it's is not. It is retained by the power valve. Yeah, so it's just like, don't wreck anything. Yeah. And remember, uh, aluminum threads have a finite life in anything. That's why aluminum heads scare me. Pretty much anything aluminum scares me because aluminum fails. <laughs> it's, uh, it's designed to fail. Yeah, and here's your, so now that we changed out these jets, um, you just put your power valve in there. Uh, make sure that is straight and make sure I have a gasket on I do have a gasket on it. Show the gasket. Has a little gasket oh. right oh. there. And that gasket just seals up against this ceiling surface on your metering block. Put those in. Also don't cross thread that. Obviously. Yeah, that should just go in smooth. As you can see it just goes freely. Yeah. And then you take a wrench, and the wrench is just basically for grip and surface area so you don't bend it. But you don't need much, you just need, just so it's see, a little bit compressing that uh, the gasket. gasket there. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of guys watching this video, probably if you're tuning this much, you know, we're probably explaining stuff that is really obvious, but we're just trying to be thorough in case there is somebody that <clears throat> doesn't really know what they're doing. So Right. And so now that I've reduced, uh, put my power valve in, um, my cruising was still a little rich. It was about 12.7 or 12.5 when I was just cruising, which you can run a little more fuel economy when you're just at light throttle conditions. So I might actually change my jets out from a 70 uh, to a 68 just to go a little bit leaner on the primaries, and that's why I added more fuel when I'm at higher loads with my power valve. So You take these out. And what we're going to do now, um, I think we'll go show you the engine just to see the engine so that if you're doing this carb, um, <laughs> and you happen to have an engine similar to this, it gives you kind of some idea where to start. Um, and then also I think what we're gonna do is go for a pull and we'll just, we got an O2 sensor in this car. Um, and I'll just let Keegan kind of go over, you know, what the O2 is showing now and what it was doing before. And, you know, hopefully that helps you troubleshoot what, uh, what yours is doing, so. So once again, these are screw in by hand, very light, uh, very precise machining on them. Um, and how you look these up, these are on, they're not, on, not on QuickField's website, but if you call them, uh, maybe you'll get a guy that knows the part number I could. I'll just show that to quick too, in case somebody's going after it. Okay, go on. But the part number is, I think on Summit, it was QFT-7-20-QFT. -dash 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 QFT QFT standing for QuickField Technology, the company, which is what uh, Summit uses for their referencing. Usually the company name abbreviated and then their part associated part number and then because it's a quick fuel technologies product quick fuel has their own stamp on the back of it but the important number here is the seven the seven is um, a reference number to this actual orifice and then the dash 20 is the size of the orifice so dash 20 would be an o2o size restriction for the power valve. If you see this one, this is a 7-049 because this is an 049 restriction. Um, and like this one, I'm not gonna pick this one up, but that's a 7-45 for an yeah, so you o get whatever size you for need. an 045. So those are common sizes and But you so what was so hard about like that, that's I guess like they can figure out their own part numbers and stuff. Like they might actually have a different carburetor than this, but what like what was difficult? Is it just that nobody had knowledge on how it worked or was it just like... No one knew, uh, when I was calling around, no one knew these existed. Right, And but then is that because they don't exist in most carbs? Like this, having jets in here is not typical. No. Right, typically the power valve just opens yeah. and that's kind of all you got. And they have, an or they have a drilled out orifice, so they put a brass plug in there and then they have physically take a machine, machinist drill bit 
and they drill it out to a certain size and that's what it is. And so yeah, it's just thick. So this is really uncommon. This is really uncommon. Okay. Um, but even the people at Quick Fuel, people play with these so little that they didn't know that this part existed. I'm like, this is a power valve. There's a power valve restriction in there and referred to as a, I think they call it a PVCR, which is a power valve channel restriction. And then I finally got a guy to give me a part number, which was a 7-20 and it's a 6-32 screw in restrictor. And I would cross my fingers and I was hoping it was the right thing and I just sent it to me because it's three weeks to get stuff here in Canada, usually two weeks at the best. And my summers are finite, so. Yeah, it's like, yeah, summer's shorter and also shipping takes twice as long. And by the time you get everything, you get to drive your car for about one weekend and then it's winter again. Yeah, you just, so. just, just, order, just order every part ever and then you can't return them either because you can't return them and because the shipping will kill you. So you might as well just keep every part ever, like I did. I bought almost every power, every power valve restriction channel that they had, and uh, it's working out. Yeah. Um, so I what what I did is just I stepped down my jets now. Um, I stepped down my I stepped up my power valve channel restriction so that I'm a little bit leaner at cruising, and then when I'm starting to demand a little more load from my engine, it'll add a little more fuel than the power valve would usually do. And uh, that should give it a little more fuel in the safe zone, don't wanna run it lean. So that's that. Um, now let's reassemble it. Let's put it back together. Um, nice thing about these gaskets is they usually have an imprint of the circuits behind it, so you can't. So like, overall, you're probably really satisfied with this carb, hey? Like it's been a good, good carb. I'm, for this I'm really happy with the quick fuel carb. Um, basically, when I was looking at carburetors, uh, the quick fuel technology had a lot of uh, the features that only really high end Hollies would. They're very similar design. Almost all the parts between a Holly and quick fuel are interchangeable, and especially since they're own, both owned by Holly now, they're probably very interchangeable. Um, but basically this offered a lot of features that only the premium Hollies did for a little bit less cost. Um, they were one of the first companies to do the black anodizing. Um, yeah, it's a very nice looking carb. It's very, very slick. Not looking. good for filming. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've, I've been trying really hard guys and I know this is not going to be a top tier video, but uh, I don't think there's a lot of people making videos on this, so we're just going to have to uh, live with it. Some really nice features on it. I've been really happy with it and um, really quality machining. Uh, so you can send that together, football metering block. Um, your gaskets all kind of line up and have a reference point on them that they match up. Yep. Too easy. Put that together, and uh, these are your car bolts. Just I just keep them up to keep the, everything aligned and together. Cool. All right, so we'll throw that back on there. All right. I mean, that's a really nice looking carb. It is. And this is from, gra keep in mind that this is from driving on gravel roads because we're in Canada. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it's kind of dusty right now. Here. Um, just make sure you have your accelerator pump. Let me come on that side. Over. <laughs> so make sure that this plunger, obviously, just with your reassembly, everything's supposed to where it goes. Uh, of course, don't try my trouble with it, and uh, so it just kind of finds its own place there. It's nice, and then these just thread in gently by hand. That way, you know it's lined up. You don't you don't get your wrench out right away. No need to. Everything's aluminum. Everything's delicate. Aluminum. So many benefits. So many setbacks. And you take your. 516s. I like to keep pressure on the bowls just to compress the gaskets a little bit so there's not so much strain on the threads when you're tightening. And of course having a ratchet the right way would help. It's always the wrong way. Go figure. And you just do it in a crisscross pattern. Like I said, carb videos would probably explain this. But and these are always never tight enough anyway, so as soon as you fire up your fuel pump, they'll leak and then you just tighten it a little bit tighter until it stops leaking. Or you strip your threads, whichever comes first. <laughs> oh, aluminum's the best. 
I actually I don't know if the quick fuel uh, technology carbs are helicoiled. Helicoil being a metal threaded insert put into the aluminum just to strengthen the threads. I don't I don't know if they are. Anyone you can comment below if you if you know. Don't be shy. Or comment above. Yeah, I don't know what platform we're gonna use anymore. Yeah, I'm thinking streetfire.net. <laughs> I heard it's gonna make a comeback. Um, then just do up your fuel because everyone loves when you have your uh, 120 gallon per hour fuel pump turn on and none of your hoses are connected. That's always nice. Oh, we might as well do a startup video. I'm just gonna grab my all 16ths here. Be right back. Hmm. 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 And uh, there's special aluminum all 16 wrenches for this, so you don't gull your really overpriced, well, not overpriced, but expensive anodized fittings. But uh, I don't have that because I'm poor, so I just cinch it up. Be very gentle. It doesn't take much. These and fittings are the bomb, and uh, that should be go. Um, I'll, we'll check our fuel pumps, check for leaks, and then... Uh, and I quote, that should be go. Let's just go over this engine quick. Okay, hang on. For the folks. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I know until Tegan gets back. So, radiator, electric fan. This is not factory, believe it or not. And you had to go through another radiator, didn't you? Uh, so we didn't have enough cooling at one point. Anyway, there's electric fan. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's factory steering, right? Well, because it was a yeah factory steering, but it was originally a 318 motor. Uh, factory brakes. Like a 1972 318 motor, which so doesn't produce. It was power. originally a 318 motor, or it was originally. And then it's bored out. Uh, well, it was originally a 318 motor, and I just got a whole new engine. So. Oh, so this isn't the original motor at all. No, not at all. So why are we talking about that? So what is this engine? It's a Mopar. MSD ignition. Ah, uh, what else can I tell you? Definitely not fat. Good, good, good pipes on it coming out. Um, Edelbrock heads. Is there anything special about the heads? Uh, Edelbrock RPM aluminum heads. Oh, that's what I got for my Cougar. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, uh, intake probably Edelbrock. To go with the Edelbrock heads, I'm guessing. Yep. Uh, Edelbrock RPM air gap. Uh, pretty good street car. Um, with the dual plane, it gives a little bit better torque curve. Right. And then obviously the uh, quick fuel carb. Yep. Um, so what do you think you're getting out of this for power? You know what? Uh, Blueprint Engine says they are producing 445 horsepower and uh, 500 foot-pounds of torque. But I think this is just a little bit less. And I've took everything off the engine that sucks power. Like all I have is an alternator water pump running off it, which is I think the minimum for a streetcar. Um, put electric fans on it. Yeah, so I mean basically you call it 440. So I mean if you have an engine pushing that much power, you might want to have a similar power valve setting, but I suppose it also depends on what it, does ambient temperature matter for power valve settings? Pro like we're probably not because it's maybe, vacuum we're, right we're different elevations too right so yeah tough to say tough um, to say but I mean, this gives you some kind of guideline I mean if by some miracle you have this exact engine and what's the block originally it's a 360 block a 360 um, yeah I, the only thing that the blueprint has changed on their engines I believe is they changed from a cast piston which this has to a forge piston but if you go to blueprint engines go to their aluminum headed 408 engine uh, all the specs are on there. I think the cams are remaining yeah. the same. So I mean basically long story short, I mean for the purposes of this video Probably you're not gonna have the same engine <laughs> But if you do you could use the jet sizes that we kind of talked about And uh, we're gonna kind of go through next here um, the tuning process uh, We're in the car now the carbs back installed Everything's kind of ready to go to run and we're gonna go out and do a test drive before we do that We just want to kind of talk a little bit about the tuning side of it so, just the door closing. Yeah. Oh, sorry for the interruption, I'll cut that out. Like I said, movie magic. So what we want to do is we just want to go over the two things that you need, two things. 
uh, to kind of make sure that you're doing this right. Otherwise, I don't really know how you'd know. So the first one is uh, the vacuum gauge. So you want to talk about that quick, Tegan? Yeah, vacuum gauge hooked to your intake manifold, seeing manifold pressure. Uh, basically, it's a way to determine the load of your engine. We're cruising down the street at light throttle conditions, like on the highway, at about 55 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, or 100 kilometers, 90 kilometers for Canadians, um, you'll see about 16 inches of vacuum, and then at full throttle, you'll see about zero. You should see at 6.5 inches of vacuum, you should see a change. My, my power valve should open up and add more fuel to the circuit. So just, yeah, uh, thanks for talking about that, Tegan. Just keep in mind the vacuum gauge basically just measures the vacuum pressure that's inside your intake, so you can look that up uh, if you want to know more about it. And then the second gauge we need is the O2 sensor. This one's probably, I would argue, almost more important. Yeah. Um, and do you want to just turn it on for a second? I'll show what it looks like, and then sure. you can talk about it. So basically, uh, it's not running right now, but it's just going to show you lights. We'll show this when the car's running. Um, why is it a 14.8 just because that's max? 14.8 uh, that's uh, around stoichiometric but basically it needs to come to temperature before it gives you a proper air fuel ratio and there's no air fuel going through it right now um, so it's basically going to keep going leaner as it heats up until it gets to operating temperature and it'll just show full lean because there's no fuel in the air and the air is 100% so it just maxed out right there. Pretty typical. Yeah. So yeah, the noise you're hearing, by the way, is the fuel pump, performance fuel pump in this car, so a little bit noisier than normal. Um, so yeah, do you want to just go about kind of what we're going to be looking for for tuning the power valve? So we're tuning the power valve, I basically wanted a mix of fuel economy in my primary jets, and then add fuel for safety for performance and safety of the engine at higher throttle conditions and higher loads. So when we're cruising, you want to see around a 13.5 air to fuel ratio because on a carburetor engine, the distribution may not be 100%, and you don't want to run lean to pistons, so I'll run like 13.5, and then as I get into more, thr more throttle, you'll see the vacuum drop off to about 6.5, or a little bit less, and then you should see, as it starts to lean before the power valve kicks in, you'll see it getting leaner and leaner and leaner, as it draws more uh, more on the primary circuits, to more demand for it, and then when the power valve kicks in, you should see it drop back off to a ideal condition of around maybe 12, 12.9 12 is what we're looking for. And then if I ever go to a full throttle condition, that's where the secondaries come in, and then, then it's running on all the circuits. It's running on the primaries, the secondaries, and the power valve, and all those circuits should add up to give you a nice 12.9, uh, maybe 12.7 air to fuel ratio for peak performance, and it keeps your engine pistons cool. And that's what we're looking for here. So, show cruising. So that's cruising uh, uh, vacuum and just kind of roll into it. Power valve right now opens at about, uh, what, six? So power valve should be open. And then flat out, no vacuum. Just rolling into the throttle. Just planted, I just want to show everyone why we're rolling into it to make for the power valve as opposed to just planting it. So when you plant it, you'll see the vacuum here is just going to drop to nothing. Woo! And downshift apparently. Um, so yeah, uh, so if you want to test your power valve, you need to roll into it. I can't show both gauges at the same time, so you're just going to have to watch the foot pedal position. Uh, so the O2 sensor down here, and go ahead, Tegan, you kind of describe what's uh, what we're looking for if you want. Okay, so we just want to make sure that we stay around that 13. I'm cruising right now, so I could go a little bit leaner with the primaries, but just because it's really hot and really humid today, um, this will probably lean out at night, so that's fine for driving. <laughs> Rolling into the throttle now, uh, you can see it starts to lean out. Uh, we're about to mid throttle now, and then that is really lean. The power valve should be open right now.
go not to full throttle, but when I think uh, I'm just gonna set the vacuum to a 6.5 or a 5, make sure that the when the power valve should open and see what my condition is. So And like I said, these are brass. You got a screwdriver off, man. It's got dirt all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, sorry about that. Yeah, just, I'll edit that part out. But Make not, sure, but and then you just take your screwdriver, and I know I have a big screwdriver, but don't be intimidated by the size of it, because I'm just, I'm using it for surface area. You put your blades in, and you just, uh... Phrasing. As Megan Fox said. It squirts the fuel in so you can go faster. Oh. 049. I can't believe they sent you a box like this. <laughs> well, look at three little teeny jets. Four. And this huge box. Thank you. Oh, I guess you also got this gasket. And stickers. Most important. And stickers. Yeah. I actually ordered the stickers and they just threw those in. <laughs> yeah, America.